Hey, thank you for coming. Um, my name is Cecilia Pacheco. I am the Economic Development and Project Specialist at STC.UNM, which is the Technology Transfer and Economic Development Office for the University of New Mexico, including all the branch campuses. And we have started a program. It's our second year. Um, it's called the University Center Program, which has allowed us to bring um, e-commerce and entrepreneurial training to students and community members um, at UNM and then in their surrounding communities in the branch campuses. So this um, seminar is part of that program and we asked Stephen, who is, as mentioned, you probably know a professor at UNM Valencia and he's been working with us to help um, facilitate and grow the university and go to the University Center um, in New Mexico. So um, I'll be giving his talk today and we're happy to have him. Thank you for coming. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. Again, we've got a lot of people here. Alex, you need a spot? Well, come on. <laughs> all right, guys. So again, welcome in. Uh, she did say my name, but I got quite a few students here. So if anyone like to mention to Cecilia how the last name is pronounced, anyone want to say it? It's like you step on the tack and you go, Ash. Stephen Tack Ash. So, welcome in, guys. A few things we're going to do today. One well, of the first things I wanted to do was just to hand out this handout and kind of classroom setting here. Uh, it's exactly how my classroom set out. I got a lot of students here. Raise your hand if you're one of my students, former, current, uh, friends or family members. And now raise your hand if we've never met before so I can come around and make sure I meet y'all. Okay. So, Again, this first one, I'm just going to pass out a little stack here. And if you guys can just pass them along, a few, and if you guys can just pass these back. And add a few, and we can pass some back. So, on the front side of this, don't worry, it's not going to be hand out heavy or anything like that. But on the front side, it just is the front side of the flyer, okay, for this one. Now, eventually, once everyone gets these into their hands, I would love, if anyone's feeling a little bit brave, uh, to stand up and to read the little front side here of this handout. So, so who's feeling a little bit like they can stand up and talk in front of this group? I hope all of us can soon. Um, and do we have any extras floating around? Oh, thank you so much. Sure. Even I'll do it for you. All right, Susan, thank you so much. This is Hi, everybody. I'm Susan Cornelius, and I work with Stephen. I'm actually the mentor that's coming from the university program down to UNM Valencia. And we're giving an office hours there. So we're talking about the next level navigator. Um, who you are, where you're going, and how you will get there. This seminar will be the first step that allows you to begin to answer these questions for yourself and to go from who you are to who you are intended to be. Short exercises will be completed by the audience and all who actively engage, I like to add actively engage, may as well walk away from this seminar with a stronger ability to advocate for the future where the following statement is true. What I do for a living is what I meant to do with my life. All right. So after just hearing those words, okay, after just hearing those words, what jumps out at you all is potentially exciting about the seminar or what made you want to come? Now, again, if you're in my classes, yeah, you came. It was a cool field trip. That's great. But again, just she read it so well. Looking over the words there, what jumped out at you that makes you excited? Anyone just raise your hand and say something. Don't have to be scared. Start calling you, Beth Denise. So do I. Brandon Gutierrez, how about you, sir? Uh, what makes you excited about that prompt? What made you want to come? Uh, well, mostly just kind of like figuring out who I am and what it is that I want to do with it. Um, I know specifically I've done this before this navigator, and sure. it really did help me out a lot with kind of figuring out, like, channeling my passions with, like, music and coffee. Figure Can everyone hear him okay? So again, if anyone's interested in the talk in here, I know I called. I'm just sure you're talking to the back of the room. You got it, man. But he was just saying he's gone through it before, figuring out who he is, where he wants to go. 
Definitely good. Raise your hand if you've done a navigator before with me all the way through. All right, so we have about 10 in here. Later, I'm going to call on you that have gone through <laughs> to chat on it a little bit. Okay. But let's talk about this, who you are. I'm just going to draw this humongous W, and you guys know this is way bigger than I've ever written in class. My poor students, even if they don't wear glasses, can barely see. So big W. So we got who, what are those journalist questions that you always hear? Who, what, where, when, why, and how. Okay, so big how, too. So nice big W, who you are. where you're going, and how you'll get there. Oops, I guess I don't need to draw the W. Who you are, where you're going, and how you'll get there. Now, on the back side of this handout, we have the current forward, okay? George Black is the author of this book here. It's called The Next Level Entrepreneur. That's its new title. But others of you in here that know I've been working with this book and this process for quite a while, tell me what the old title was called. Dear Mr. A. And again, it's just letters between two folks. Okay? It's a young kid, this guy, his name's Max North, he lives in Salina, Kansas, and an older gentleman, C. Mark Aureliano. Okay? He's a telecom giant. The whole thing's set before World War II, but what I love about it and maybe someone or some people that have gone through the book before can tell you, is it a textbook, yes or no? Does it kick your teeth in and say, memorize these definitions? These are the red letters of this textbook Bible, and you better memorize them. Yeah. No, no, so it's not doing the front door approach trying to cram things down your throat. Instead, it's almost as if you left a little pie sitting on your ear window. And you're reading, and all of this nice information is sneaking into your head, and all of a sudden you're thinking differently, you're being inspired, so on and so forth. You guys feel that when you've read the book before? Yeah? So, that book is pretty good. Uh, long story short, I moved to San Antonio, Texas, to my doctoral studies, went to the University of Texas in San Antonio. When my wife was moving out there, we rented a house in a part of town called Alamo Heights. Now, San Antonio, is it a big city or small? What do you guys think? It's yeah. big. Seventh largest city in the United States. 1.7 million people, but somehow, in some way, I moved into this rental house. And my neighbor, just across the alley, was this guy on the back of the book, George. And it's funny how we met. I said, hey, uh, neighbor, can my dog eat these seeds from this tree? And he goes, oh, let's not be from around there. Those are pecans. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm actually not from here, and that's how we met. Talked over the fence. He said, what do you do? I said, I'm going to school to finish up my doctorate in business. He goes, oh, that's neat. Well, I'm writing a business book. Would you mind looking at it? It's just in this brief, you know, PDF or Microsoft Word uh, format. But could you look at it and maybe use some feedback? So he gave me part one, just like a few. Not like this much. And I said, all right, cool, give him some feedback. And then he says, here's part two, and then part three. And I met with him, and when I got to the end, I told him, George, I've always been looking for something to use in my classes when I teach or when I work with people in business, something that they'll remember forever, and that they'll say, wow, man, I went to all of that school, whether it was elementary school, middle school, high school, or even sometimes lots of college, maybe they're up into their master's studies or doctoral, and they go, it was all worth it. It was all worth it. That experience that I just had was all worth it. I try to have that in my classes. And again, this is the book that I use as a supplemental text to no matter what topic I teach. And so if somebody's feeling brave, why don't you just read at least part of this forward, and we'll see how we're feeling more excited or less after the forward. So who wants to stand up? It can't be Susan. Cornelius again. <laughs> Who's got a voice that can carry just a little bit and isn't afraid to read? How about Chrissy McAfee? <laughs> All right, Chrissy, come on up to the front even if you would. And read for me this forward. Sure. You got it. Nice and loud. Dear Mr. A, forward by Stephen E. Takich. 
Imagine what would feel like, what it would feel like to live fully in the person you were meant to be. Imagine the comfort of knowing that each step you are taking is toward the place you were meant to go. Imagine the conviction and trust in knowing each day what you are doing is helping you get there. Embedded in this vision are the answers to three humbling questions that you may not have the answers to now, but after reading Dear Mr. A and engaging the exercises within, you will. Who are you? Where are you going? How will you get there? An old business adage states, under promise and over deliver. So why do I make such a bold claim to begin this forward? Because consistence, consistent with the adage, what is answered above is just the beginning of what will be delivered. The freedom that I feel every day by living into my truest self comes from understanding my, from my understanding of who I am, which I now know because of the process in this book. The comfort that I feel every day through knowing that the actions I take are leading me to where I am intended to be was bestowed upon me after reading this book. The determination and clarity that I feel every day in all my strides to reach where I am headed has never been more certain since my engagement with this book. This text that is before you and the process within has enabled me to know my purpose here on this earth, my purpose in this life, my one song to sing, which is, to help others go from who they are today to who they are intended to be. Before engaging with this book and the process within, I always knew I wanted to help others. I could feel it. I just did not know how. I did not know where all my actions were leading. Now I can state with conviction that my promise to all in this world is that when they interact with me, they will feel comfort through trust and they will experience transcendence through community. Comfort through trust, transcendence through community. I am empowered to face each day with drive and purpose, eagerness and will, honor, and the ultimate privilege of having a sense of knowing the answer to life's big question. What in the world am I here on this planet for? If having this kind of assurance is something that you seek, if making this kind of bold statement is something that you desire, if peace within is something that you long for, then reading this text before you is the first step. Engaging the exercises inside the book is the second step. As a third step, seek a community of which you are a contributing part to encourage you. These steps are how you can go from who you are today to who you will become at your next level. Many authors pour themselves into their writing to create a text that is good. However, few authors offer good news that is worth spreading. I agree to write this forward because the, next, because the text before you is good news worth spreading. Please believe me when I tell you that you are more than the sum of the knowledge you attain or the things that you create. Allow me to leave you with one last question. How long do you want to continue before knowing these answers for yourself? All right, let's give her a hand. I'm a little golf clap or something else. All right. Sounds pretty good. All right. Does anyone feel any kind of excitement? Well, let me just ask you some of those questions real quick from this forward to see what you think. So, if anyone just stopped you in an elevator, for example, and they said, hey, what's your purpose on this planet? Would you be kind of taken aback and you go, well, how long is this elevator ride? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, who are you? Well, I'm Stacy Seiko. Well, where are you going? Port <laughs> How do you get there? I'm just gonna stand here till the door's open and things, all right? But again, who you are, where you're going, and how you'll get there. Three big questions, and they are quite humbling, right? Now, the business adage that I say here, right? What do you do? You over promise and under deliver, or is it the other way, guys? The other way around, right? We want to under promise and over deliver. And again, just being able to answer these three questions who you are, where you're going, and how you'll get there is just one thing that can come from going through this process. And there's so much more that can happen. And if you guys want to chat with me afterward, we can talk a little bit more about what happened to me besides just this. Now let's look at some of these power words that are bolded on here. Does anyone like to feel restrained or do you guys generally like to feel free? Freedom? That's good. Do you guys like to feel anxious or not at ease? Or do you like to feel comfort? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> You like to wander around aimlessly under a cloud of thick smoke, not knowing what you're doing? Or do you like to take strides 
with clarity. Like, I know where I'm headed, and you can advocate it for folks. And here's where I'm going, and this is why. Oh, yeah, you might think it's a pipe dream, but here. Here's how I will get there. Okay, determination and clarity. So, my purpose here on this earth, right? Yeah, I know it's going to change, and I'm quite young. I understand. But having a sense of that and knowing that it's always going to be some form of this statement here is a very, very good feeling for me. To help others go from who they are today to who they're intended to be. Sorry, I got a little misty-eyed just for a second. I know that's what I'm meant to do. Now, does it have to be in the four walls of a state-funded building? No. Could it be at a Starbucks? Could it be on the plane? Could it be just someone that you barely met, but you get to chat with them for a little bit? Sure. Again, I like to be the steps, the stepping stones that allow someone to go from who they are today to who they're intended to be. And no, there's no relative reference there. I'm not saying I like to help people be better, okay, or worse, faster or slower. What I'm trying to say here is that there's only one person that can help you figure out who you're intended to be, and it's not me, okay? I'm the person that can be the sounding board that helps you find the answer, but now can you just Google, who am I intended to be? Will it give you any answers? Probably not. If this gentleman here looked across the table and said, I know who you're intended to be, right here, would you take that answer? Probably not. Probably not. Again, <laughs> it's got to come from y'all and from within you all. But in order for you guys actually to feel this comfort, in order for us all to lift up, from where we are today, in this small room, I guess it's pretty small with all these people in it, right? But this small room for us all to lift up together, right? To transcend from who we are to who we're intended to be. We've got to feel some comfort, okay? We've got to feel some comfort. But I don't think you guys will feel totally comfortable in here until you trust me and you trust one another. So everyone just look to your left, look to your right, look to your friends, your peers, your colleagues across from you. And let's just talk just a little bit. Just introduce yourself, say hello. Okay. Now, I've got some cards to pass out. I usually, and you can ask my students, first day of class, what do I do? Walk around and, how do we do it? Let's do it, Jasmine, hi. Hi, Jasmine. Bustamante, oh, nice to meet you. I would go around and meet all of you guys right now, but I can't give a time, but if you want to pass a few down, pass a few down, I want you guys to take these, to so look at them, and at the end of this presentation, on the back of the card, if you would, unless you want a personal one for yourself, I can give you another one so it's nice and clean, but on the back, I'd like you to write down your information and send me an email, you can snap a picture of the card or whatever like that, but just so that we can all connect in a more personal way. Again, my cell phone's on there, and I always get told by my colleagues at work, you're going to give out your cell phone number to people. I say, yeah, like middle schoolers. Middle schoolers come into talks at Union Valencia, and sure enough, I'm handing them my cards. And I say, well, you know, don't TikTok me. You guys know what that app is. It's like a Snapchat. Okay, I'm like, I just, tell me if you really need to, otherwise you can use the email. Okay. Now, I've written up some things on this board. There's no need to take a whole bunch of notes or anything. But again, the purpose and what I'm trying to promise to you guys during this seminar is that we're going to be only taking just the very first step. There's no way that we could have possibly gone through the entire book, all the exercises. But if somebody has that forward in front of you, maybe Eve, my friend here, Eve, Wakelin can stand up. Can you just tell me again what that first step is according to the forward? And everyone can kind of read along. The first step. And again, we want to do all these things so you guys can feel everything that was described in the board. But the first step, what is it, Eve? I project uh, my grandpa right in the back. No, way down here, so. You just start there and then. Yep. Cool. Okay, if having this kind of assurance is something that you seek, if making this kind of bold statement is something that you desire, if peace within is something that you long for, then reading this text before you is the first step. All right, give me a sec. So, 
We're going to read the text. All right. And again, it's not, a text. it's not a textbook at all. So this is my personal copy of the book. I am going to pass it around. If you already own a copy or you've seen it, keep on passing it for me because then more people can see it. But this is the text, all right? That's the first step. You read through it. And I pass this book, maybe gifted or given or... Um, I guess even sold some of these books to folks. Again, I don't get any money about talking about this book. If you read that book or you heard Christy reading it, this is good news worth spreading. Okay? It's good news worth spreading. So the first is to read the text. I do have some people that say, oh, I read it. It's a really good read. Nice style, you know, cool. That's why I like the character development and everything like that. And they go, how far did you get? I'm like, oh, you know, I'm like page 70. Okay, so I haven't quite read the text okay, all the way through. I haven't quite read the text all the way through, but again, read that text, the first one. Eve, will you tell me the second step, please? Sure. Engaging the exercises inside the book. All right, so I've got to make this be nice and, and big. So I've got to engage okay, those exercises. So... Again, raise your hand if you've gone through the Next Level Navigator process. Raise your hand. All my students' hands better be up. Now they have their, someone hold up your green packet, Brandon, if you will. So they all got this packet and it's got all of the exercises within it. There is a nice checklist for them just so they knew exactly what to turn. And it's great, but engage in those exercises. Now, I've invited a special friend here. His name's Brandon Shane. He's in the back. He's been my friend for a long time. We've done study abroad together in Europe. I hung out in his flat in Granada, Spain. Uh, we learned about enchanted oranges, or as we like to call them, naranjas en brujadas. And he's a good friend. He is a business owner of many, many different entrepreneurial endeavors at his young age. We're about the same age. And he sat down with me one time and went through this process in just in about a minute, if you would. You don't have to talk about each of the exercises. You don't have to talk about anything in particular. But just if you would just say, stand up and say, you know, I've done lots of things in entrepreneurial education, attended seminars, whatever. Just kind of compare and contrast and give a little talk from someone that's not me. Yeah, so uh, I'll just tell you a little story about Steve McKee. He went in high school, career in the student body leadership at different schools at one point. But then when I lived in Spain, he showed up my doorstep with a uh, bottle of Brazilian Sambuca and nothing on his back but his clothes and he said, I'm here man, so let's do it. So um, we go all the way back and a lot of great stories, but essentially the scene where even Steve has come from, who he's become, uh, is pretty incredible because I've known him for the last 20 years. Um, but just going through this course together, literally three years back, Stephen and I met up with over many different cups of coffee and just hanging out and um, I think what's, what I took away from it is the quality of your life is determined by the quality of the questions you ask. The questions that you asked through this process of me uh, really got me to, to dig deep and to ask my reason why. And my reason why for what I do with what I do in life and what I've come to become as I am right now. But I'm always you know, looking to improve that. And I think one of the biggest things I've learned is doing this process and just everything I've learned is you, know, you can make a living with normal education, going to school, reading books, things like that, but you'll make a fortune with, with soft education. Continuing to do things like this where you actually ask the deeper questions and you really get into why, you know, the reason why. And the reason I even came down here today was to share with you, um, you know, just like Stephen said, I've one of the people in this room, there's Steve over there recognizing him, like I've done businesses with Steve, we've started the Amazon businesses together. Um, I've, I've had a lot of failures doing different businesses over the years, different things online. I have a local business now. Um, but even just looking through these notes, like there were things that I wrote down in my, my navigator with you, man, that I look back and I can't believe, like just looking at them, just being like, that, that's been checked off, like this is achieved. This is, like at one point it was just a vision and the navigator was, these are the next steps. Like there's this mountain you gotta climb to get to this vision. and and I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't even know what these steps were. But Stephen helped me to plan them through this process. And um, not everything has been accomplished because I still haven't achieved the whole next level. It takes 
several years and then you kind of reevaluate and do it again and you just keep part of an ongoing process in your life to continue to getting better constant self you know improvement and growth but I can definitely say like it's uh, been a huge blessing and a huge help in my life to just I like to think of it like a compass like we're all out on a ship on this big journey and if you guys don't have your compass if you don't know why you're where you're going and why like these questions he's asking um, you know you're just going to end up going in circles and but if you have a, a definite purpose, a definite reason why, you can chart crazy territories and you can get through anything. And if you become stronger inside and on your mind, like anything external is not going to be able to break you. So that's what this is all about. It's, it's becoming knowing who you are, knowing where you're going, so that nothing breaks you in your path to getting there. And one day you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, oh, you can help me ask the right questions. And um, it's not even just this book, it's just always asking. How can you be better? What's your reason why? What's the next step to get where you want to go? Thank you so much. Let's give Brandon a hand. <laughs> so again, I, I called on Brandon because he's one of my close, close, close friends. I've had a lot of friends also. I mean, the family members that, uh, you know, I give him the book. He's writing yours. I give him the book. This is the other cover, by the way, the green one, Dear Mr. Ray. I give him the book, and they look through it, and maybe they read the text, and they give me that nice feedback. Uh, they never, though, want to sit down and truly engage in the exercises. And while I was working with Brandon on his exercises, we didn't talk. No, not one bit. I would just sit there and do my work, prep for courses, and he was sitting there doing his work, and people were coming in and out of his employees, and he was working, and we just kind of worked side by side. And then every once in a while, he'd say, hey, I'm working on this question, and let me just kind of run by what I'm writing down. And I said, okay, write it down, or say it out. So he'd say it out, and I said, well, that's pretty interesting, but does that have anything to do with this other thing <laughs> that you wrote? And maybe it was like three hours earlier, and it's like, oh, yeah. And then it just turns into something totally different, and the idea is totally changed, and nothing's the same. And that little sounding board right there, I'm getting the tingles underneath this nice coat, right? That part right there really and truly gets me going. It truly stirs my heart. Makes me feel all the feels. Okay? So, first step, read the text. Second step, engage in the exercises. And Eve, one more time, the third step. And this is the important part that I don't want you guys to leave today without doing. So let's write it down. And seek a community of which you are a contributing part to encourage you. Seek community. So, raise your hand again if you've gone through this process with me before. Right, up, 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 up. Everyone that has their hand up, 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 yes. Everyone that has their hand up definitely is somebody that's in the community because many of those are my students. But again, if they've read the text, if they've engaged with the exercises, they're already in the community whether they know it or not, and they could talk. Now, everybody else, though that has not yet gone through it, but that will, you might need to talk to somebody about it, right? Like, it's almost as if, you guys like that show, Friends? Yeah? It's almost as if we all watch the same episode of Friends. We're like, oh yeah, that one time with Rachel and Phoebe, and they went over here to Ross's house, and so on and so forth, and we all watched the exact same episode so we can relate to it. Well, once we've read the text and engaged with exercises, we can say, it's kind of like in that one letter, where Max is writing to Mr. A, and he says, Oh, Miss Ray, when you told me that thing, dinner, blah, blah, blah. And then you go, oh, yeah, I totally can relate to that letter. I love it. And here's what I thought when that happened, and here's what I thought, and here's where I went from it. Okay? Seeking community. So, again, you guys all have my card. And I ask you to please send me your info. This is future thinking, okay? Send me your info. And, again, if you want to just look to the person to your left, and to your right, and share contact info with them before you leave, I think that would be a very beneficial step for you. And this seminar, again, who you are, where you're going, how you'll get there, pretty good, okay? Helping you go from who you are today to who you're intended to be. Now, I recently came up with this new exercise, and I want us all to do it today, okay? I believe wholeheartedly, and I know it's one of my purposes here on Earth, right, is to help folks 
go from here to there. Again, no relative reference. Because I believe this here is a path worth pursuing. Okay, it's a path worth pursuing. So I'm going to just draw this here. Path worth pursuing. And what I want us all to do here, I got some paper. It's green. <laughs> nice and fun and if we don't have quite enough sheets I'll have to get some white for you all but to take a sheet of paper you can pass it on back you pass it on back and what I want you to do when you get the paper is to write your name up in the upper right hand corner in today's date okay write your name in today's date I'm going to flip this whiteboard around just for a minute So I can give you guys an example of what I want this to look like. I'll use green, since you guys have nice green paper. All right. So in the upper right-hand corner, just write the words path. Which I could top path. Worth. All caps, if you would. Pursuing your name and the date are up here. A path worth pursuing, guys. Path worth pursuing. Now, I work with lots of different educators been to lots of different conferences, I've been in talks with lots of different entrepreneurial education, competitions, programs, so on and so forth. I've had deep talks with Susan Cornelius over here, with Kara, with Cecilia here at the Rainforest, Rafael Campo, Lisa Catilia. I've been talking with people on my campus, of course, talked to my folks back in San Antonio. But truly, when I ask these folks, how much time is spent on helping ensure that students, this idea that they have for this business they want to start is a path worth pursuing or it's an idea that they will work for no matter what. Have that grit, that intensity, they'll keep working toward it. A lot of them say, well, the students come with ideas and we take that idea and make it a reality through commercialization plans, through different education, and through the experience. And so I'm going to try to focus with you guys today a little bit on identifying a path that's worth pursuing for you. Now I'm here. Did you guys think I woke up this morning groggy and said, oh man, I gotta go give this seminar? I really hate my job. I really do. I just, I, I just, I'm a famous to call in. I'm just gonna phone it in. I'm just gonna go through the motions. Or do you think I woke up and said, oh, I'm so excited. Which one? Just knowing me for just a few minutes or if you know me for a longer period of time, which one do you think it was? I'm so I was so excited. All my clothes were laid out. I was ready. <laughs> I got a haircut yesterday. Oh, man, I was so pumped to see you guys today, and I still am. Now, I know that teaching isn't the end-all, be-all for me, and it's not the only thing that I'll ever do, let's say, at the university level, but I do know that it's one of the things I'm meant to do. And what I brought for you guys, you can see my dog ate my folder, seriously, now, is this folder that I created, and you can see on the front, I made it small, but... It says Stephen Tackett, 9-12 of 2014. 2014, right? It was the first time I seriously took to heart all the exercises and went through them. And at the end, and I will pass this around because I'm not ashamed of sharing with you. At the end of it all, you can see all these nice handwritten notes of all these things I aspired to be as a child and as an adult and why. And all the things that happened, and oh, I didn't become that, or I didn't become this, and going on just handwritten after handwritten. And all my students in here, you know, right? We handwrite because what? What do I always say? We well, remember more, but I believe there's an intimate connection between the pencil or pen, your hand, and your eyes and your brain. Because I'm a fast typer, really fast. And I can just put a book over here and not even look at the screen. I can just type the whole chapter up if I'm doing notes, right? We write these things because, well, it takes this effort to write it down. The fewer and fewer and fewer words 
the reductionist principle within all these exercises really helps you get down to just the meat and potatoes of what you're trying to say. And I'm trying to get to my last page here, and I'm almost there. This is what I believe I'm going to pass around. I don't need to pass around the entire book. This is my navigator that I created. I walk around, you guys can see how small I usually write on the whiteboard. But very small, okay? You guys are all going to get a template of the navigator for yourself as well as some other handouts at the end of today's seminar. I'm going to pass this around so you guys can actually take time to read it if you'd like, but I'm just trying to show you the basic format. Now today this path worth pursuing that we're trying to pick up is so that hopefully you can be as strongly willed and determined and have this clarity, feel this freedom of doing something that you love. Because at the bottom of this, which is the front page that you guys got, at the very bottom, this promise I tried to give to you all here, at the bottom it says, short exercises will be completed by the audience and all who actively engage, we have to be actively engaged means. You're here just to watch. Are you going to come away with what I'm about to say? Or do you need to write and do this with me? And we're all going to actively engage. Those that actively engage will walk away from this seminar with a stronger ability to be able to advocate for a future where the following statement is true. What I do for a living is what I'm meant to do with my life. Okay. So, on your green sheet of paper, I want you to draw a circle, and a circle on the left side. Let me draw it in proportion for you guys so you don't make it too big. Draw a circle on the left-hand side. I'm going to use color. So you guys can use whatever. Just about like this big. Make sure that you have enough room. I can turn this so everyone can see. Make sure you have enough room to the left of your circle to have some bullet points like this. And on the right hand side, draw another circle, and it can slightly overlap, I'd like it to, with this blue circle like this. Some overlap would be preferable. A little line and some, some bullet points. That's the start. So. Draw. I'll hold yours up. He's doing good so far, but my directions may not be as clear. I need him just to draw a little line here because he's going to write something in some bullet points. Line over here with some bullet points. It might have to be below. Below is fine. It's all for you guys. I'm not collecting these. There's no grade associated. This is all just for you. Above the blue circle, write this statement here. I'm going to write it big. My form is a little smaller. What I want to do for a living. About the blue circle, right? What I want to do for a living. So this line here that was blank, that's where you put occupation. That goes right here. So, for example, if somebody in here wrote hairdresser, what I want to do for a living is hairdresser. Well, the bullets underneath where they write hairdresser, they give some reasons for why they want to do that for a living. For example, I get to make my own schedule. I don't have to report all my tips. Flexible. I get to spend time with my kids. But then maybe they get a little bit deeper and they say something along the lines of, it allows me to show the beauty that's within all people on the outside of something nice and heartwarming. So you guys write an occupation. Okay. So for this example, I'll write hairdresser up here. Put it on that. Hairdresser. And then some things that I just said. So just write your reasoning behind it right there.
about 30 more seconds. You can come back to it later. This is something that you're going to also be given a handout. Nice and pretty and brand new. It looks like this. But I didn't want you to see it all at once, so I haven't given it to you yet. What do I want to do for a living? Okay. In the interest of time, I'm going to write the red circle now. Over the red circle. What? I want to do with my life. What you want to do with your life? Woo! That's a little bit bigger of a question than just what you want to do for a living. So, you can just write my life. During my lifetime, here's some things I want to do. And I gave this presentation first to a whole bunch of 12-year-olds. And I know school students, and they kick foot out, by the way. But what do you want to do for a living? That was pretty nice and easy. A lot of students came up with a lot of cool ideas. But what do you want to do with your life? I had a 12-year-old girl raise her hand and say, do you mean like a bucket list, like climb Everest? And I'm like, sure. If you want to put climb Everest on there, that's fine. But again, just some things that so when you're 100 years old, or more, and you're laying in your deathbed, and you're about to go, friends and family all around you, you say, I did it. I lived a good life. Well, how would you measure that good? Like, what do you need to have done so you have that great feeling? Or you can think a little bit more morbidly, and much more sad, and say, oh, I'm on your deathbed. You made millions of dollars. You provided trust funds for your grandkids, life insurance, and retirement pension. But then you have this stark realization come over your face like this. I got really good and made a lot of money, but I didn't do the one thing I wanted to do with life, or I was meant to do during this life. So you can think of that and be like, what would be those things you'd be remorseful about not doing? And maybe that would help you populate this list. So during your life, what are some things that you want to accomplish? Okay, so again, 12 year olds. You guys ever seen that show? Are you smarter than a third grader? Yeah. All right, hopefully, we're all smarter than a uh, third grader in here. What is this called when two circles overlap and then the, this overlapping part showing the correlation between the two? What's that type of figure called? A Venn diagram, for sure. So maybe instead of asking what you want to do for a living, I could have asked what you do for a living, right? What's your current occupation? Sorry to ask the 12 year olds that. But what do you do for a living and what do you want to get done or do during your lifetime? Yeah. So how much correlation is there? Maybe uh, 10%, 20, hours, 10 hours, 20, 30. Right? Maybe there's some correlation. And again, this is a bit of faith, and you guys can be as corny as I am. You can close your eyes and pretend and do all this kind of thing. I like to pretend, go into this thing called a liminal space where we say, hey, it's really and truly happening. But what I want to do right now is flash, flash forward to the future. Okay, so Marty McFly and Doc Brown, the gas up the DeLorean. Has ever seen Back to the Future? Uh, we're getting ready to go to a future, but a very specific future. One in which that circle and that circle are 100% overlapped. Okay, so I'm just mixing our colors up. Yeah, you guys know that yellow and blue, what color do those make when you lay them over each other? Green. And what color? Does red and blue make when you lay them over each other? Purple. So on your sheet, you guys don't have to have colors, like I said, but a nice purple circle. I'm just showing you about the size and proportion. And we're going to jump forward into this liminal space, into this future, okay, to a time that this is true. Okay. I'm going to write it in purple right here, and it's going to be above your purple circle, okay?
So above that purple circle, I want you guys to write this down. What I do for a living is what I'm meant to do with my life. What I do for a living is what I'm meant to do with my life. Now, as you guys can tell, I was trying to give you some proportion up here on the board. Hopefully, you've got some room at the bottom. If you don't, you can always go to the back side. Hopefully, you've got a little bit of room at the bottom. And what I want us to do, it's got to be kind of short and sweet, and i got to go a lot faster than I love to do on this exercise, but it's okay. This is this liminal space. This is, we're all closing our eyes and opening them, and we're actually there to wherever year this is. Or what you do for a living is what you're meant to do with your life. So again, just real quick down here in the bottom, just write your name again, and I'll put my name for fun. So Stephen Zakech. And then you'll put the date. You'll put the date. And I'm not going to tell you a date. Is it three years? Four years? One year? Six months? Two weeks from now? When is the date that what you do for a living is what you're meant to do with your life? How many Years, weeks, hours, days, I mean, when is this going to happen? All right, so put the date. So I can definitely put today's date because I feel like I'm living my best life up here. Okay. But I'll just do it a year from now, for example. So I'm just going to put 1-30-2022, uh, maybe it's two years from now. All right, so the name and then the date. Now, the first journal prompt is right here, and it says, I wake up and I feel. So here's number one, there's number two. You don't have to write, I wake up and I feel. You can just write the word. But it's only going to work if you actively engage, guys. So if you didn't close your eyes and open them and it's like that date, and you're like, wow, what I do for a living, because we all got to make money, is what... I'm meant to do with my life. I wake up and I feel. So just write down a word. I wake up and I feel. You're truly there in this future state. How do you feel when you wake up? And you can boldly make that statement. What I do for a living is what I'm meant to do with your life. I wake up and I feel. One word or a phrase. The next line says, I feel this way because I am doing blank. What are you doing? What is this thing that you're doing? I feel this way because I'm doing blank. There's probably more than one word there. I feel this way because I'm doing blank. The next line. Now, this is where you have to answer this question for yourself. I cannot answer it for you. How big do you want this thing to get? Now, how big do you want this thing to get? If you were going to start a business, let's say, for example, do you want 10 really good customers or do you want 10 million customers? Do you want to operate all over the world or just all over uh, Bernalillo County? Okay. So here's the question prompt. It says, because of what I am doing, the world, but you can also just put area, community, however big you want the thing to get, the world, area, community, is much blank. Because of what I'm doing, the world, area, community, whatever size you want the thing, is much blank. You can use whatever word you want there. I get so excited about this next question, it's hard. This next one, guys, is hard to not say without a smile on your face, and it'd be even more difficult to lie. It'd be even more difficult to lie on this next question because you've got to say it at the top of your lungs because it's this awesome realization that you have when you're here in that purple circle, right? When you're here, it's hard 
Somebody wants to say it nice and loud, then we're going to hand it to somebody. So somebody that wants to just say it loud, like I did, after I'm done, I'll let you read it as well. It's hard to even imagine waking up and doing anything else other than blank. It's hard to imagine waking up and doing anything else other than I'm going to pass it off to the pitch coach, Gavin, back there, Gavin Leach, because I know he's got a good voice, so <laughs> stand up and do it. There is the line. All right. Remember, it's hard. You can imagine waking up and doing anything else in my days other than I'm not okay. You don't say your actual answer, just, all right, it That's is loud. hard to even imagine waking up and doing anything else with my days other than It's hard to imagine. Even imagine waking up doing anything else with my days other than playing. Whew, it's hard to lie on that one, guys. So hopefully you got a good answer. Now, this next line is super important. If you're working with colleagues in businesses, you're working with fellow students, friends, family members, and everything else, and they could get and work with you through just this little exercise. Now, guys, they've done the book. Is this in the book? No. I was driving down to campus, realized I had to give this presentation to all these middle schoolers, and I heard this little whisper in my ear say, if you only had 20 minutes to change someone's life, what would you do? And so I said, oh, I'll just talk about all my degrees and where I went to school and how it's hard, finance class. And... No, no, no. This came to me in my head on the drive to Union Valencia. I live up here in Albuquerque. Right? This came to me. And I drew a purple, a blue, and I drew a red, and I drew a purple. So I've always kept it the same, right? But students, there was three sets of 20 students each, and they all walked out with this sentence that I'm about to give you, filled in. I gave them all my card, yes, the 12-year-olds, with my cell phone on it, right? And said, if you ever want to reach out and talk to me, here's the line, right? Here's the line. I'm here for you. And they all walked off, and then they were on their lunch, and one girl came back and said, I just wanted to let you know I needed this. Today. She's 12. I don't know how her how bad her day was. But she said, I just I want to let you know I really needed this. Okay. So even if I can make one little impact, it feels good. But again, you guys can share this type of thoughts, type of thinking with others as well. So I want you to write this full sentence out. So let me kind of hold this up here. She's got some room like this. Oh, she's got some room, but it's not big enough. We want it to be big. So flip your paper over and turn it this way. I would say hamburger, not hot dog. Turn it that way. Yeah. A landscape and portrait, but I don't like that. So you gotta write the full sentence out, and I'll give you lots of space for blanks, okay? okay? Write this full sentence out, and you gotta write it big. I'll make sure all the words I'm writing don't take up all the words because you gotta fill in the blanks. Here we go. What? I am doing now. I gave you some blanks, right? Here's where you would fill it in. So just give yourself some blanks just like that so we can just keep writing. Lots of room for you to write. It is fully consistent with the impact. I want to make in the world which is and give yourself lots of room for blanks. All right, about 12.56 p.m. The seminar only is slated to go till 1. So, two minutes to fill in this blank, guys. Please take all of that time. Truly think about this.
another 60 seconds. <coughs> Final 30 seconds here. Can we come back as a group? All right. What I'm doing now whatever you put, is fully consistent with the impact I want to make in the world, which is, I'm not going to ask any of you to share them in this public forum, because unfortunately I don't believe we've had quite enough time to get 100% comfortable <coughs> with one another. We don't fully trust one another yet. We don't have time to set the trust quality exercise right now. Okay? But I do know that if we can come together as a community and talk amongst one another <laughs> in this seminar, Okay. We'll be able to fill this comfort by way of that trust that we have for one another, and then we'll all be able to transcend because of this community. Okay. So, Cecilia, over there, can you raise your hand, Cecilia? She has two stacks of handouts for you. Okay. The first handout is going to be some supplemental material that I wanted to give you. The second handout, the packet, is all of the exercises. Can I borrow this real quick? Is all of the exercises that are in the Dear Mr. A book, either this book or the white covered one that I just was showing you. This book. Okay. And it's for you to look at, but that doesn't mean you have to do it alone. I gave you my card, and what did I say? Email me, call me, reach out to me. I'll meet you here at the Rainforest. I'll meet you down here in Valencia. Those are two really common places we could be. All the exercises I held up Jasmine's because she's in three classes. So she went through the process three times and created three different businesses in the first eight weeks of this semester. Gavin, what do you got? Four. He's in four of my classes. Okay, and he's done them. And then people there just in one class, Jacob, he's got his done. Not all my students completed this book and finished it. That's the second packet. Okay? Going from who you are today to who you're intended to be, I believe to be a path worth pursuing. In the foreword I write, you are more than the sum of the knowledge you attain or the things you create. You're more than the sum of the knowledge you attain or the things you create. Now, that's the thing I want to leave you guys with. If you're more than that, you believe it. If you're more than that, then what are you? That's the question I want to leave you with at the end of this seminar. All right, I believe Tack Edge. He says, I'm more than the knowledge I attain or the things I create. I'm more than books and hammer. That's how I always visualize it. I'm more than books and hammer. If I'm more than that, then what am I? And if you want to talk more about that question, I'd love to talk to you guys. So I thank you guys all for coming. It's 101. I'll get to you a minute late. I'm very sorry. There's tons of pizza and bottled water and everything right out these doors. I hope we can all stick around for a moment, talk, chat, get to know one another. Okay. And Susan has a statement real quick. I'd like to make just a brief announcement. First of all, sure. thank you so much, my friend, for doing this today. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Susan Cornelius. I'm the lead mentor for the i program here at UNM Lobo Rainforest. What is that? That's the Innovation Corps. It's funded by the National Science Foundation. We have a program that's beginning very, very soon, February 24th. You don't have to be from this campus to attend it, okay? And I'm going to be driving down to Valencia 
and I'm in class in here every Monday night at 4.30, and then I meet with the teams that I mentor. There are eight different mentors. All of us are successful entrepreneurs. The program offers up something I haven't seen anybody else do. Ten weeks, I call it speed dating, to take the principles of who you are and start a working, beginning, startup tech company. What do I know about this? 477 tech companies under my belt. Former chair of MIT Enterprises, okay? I'm only one of eight people who are in that position. And we all do this because we believe in you. Am I right about that? Yeah. We're not getting paid huge salaries to do that. That's not what's going on. We get, co we get coffee money is what we get. And we are doing it because we believe that New Mexico has really intelligent people. And if I could tell you the technologies I've worked with that have been done by students and professors, you would be stunned. You have to be a business major to do this. Absolutely one of the purposes of it is to take people who are not business majors and turn them into entrepreneurs in companies. I started off as a psychologist. I ended up becoming a physicist and an engineer. And how many of you worked with me? Raise your hands. Okay, two of the students out of the program, three out of the program. Talk to them. They'll let you know what the program is like. How do you get involved in it? You look online at UNM Science Technology Corporation, STC, and then look for i -Corp. We also give you $3,000 to start up. Okay? So there's a little incentive in there. You have to be a student. You have to be a professor. You have to have an idea. Where's Kara? Is she here right now? She has to step out. Okay. You can talk to anybody who's involved in the program. And I'm going to stay with Stephen because I want to find out what happens afterwards. Um, but you can talk with anybody who's been in the program. Three people raise their hand who's been in the program. And they can lead you to where to go. And then Alec works here at the STC. And then well, you do both. You do everything. That's what God. Um, but talk to them. They'll tell you how to find the information on your phone so you can apply for it. The deadline is February 9th. Okay? And it's a small group. We have 12 to 20 companies. Last time around, we had 30 companies. What happened out of that? Out of the 27 companies that I've worked with since it's begun, typically launch rates are about 4 to 7 percent. Ours is about 30 percent. We had 67 companies launched since we started this two and a half years wow. ago. So, I'm telling you, if you want to do speed dating 101, and take what he's talking about and go, I'm going to do it. And they'll also tell you how stressful it is. I think a little bit of unease and discomfort is necessary. Absolutely. But we want to get you back <laughs> to being comfortable. So my name is Susan Cornelius. Hopefully you'll join us. Thank you guys for coming. Right. One last bit. Did you guys want that handout that you have in your hands? George Black there, there's a nice picture of him. He prepared this special handout just for you on the back side of that page. If you put it over, <laughs> the page that says Live Truly Free on the top. He wanted to give you guys this handout and wanted me to pass it out for you all. Again, there's a QR code there to scan, to sign, to get their free e-course. And then there's also links on there, of course, to see the book. And if you buy the book and send them your receipt, They'll send you a PDF version of this book. It's a fun, 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 and very, actually hard <laughs> exercise in which you're trying to create everything all in one hour. So all these students that are in here for this semester, or my prior students that have done this in the past, the entire thing all just in one hour. It's almost like a game show. You've only got two minutes, and then, okay, you've got four minutes for this one. And it's all here to write on, but in class, I usually just, I'm the worker. I'm the game show host up here. And we get to play. But again, uh, please look at that if you'd like to. George has lots of different resources as well, besides this one. But again, guys, just know that I'm up here to help you. That's it. So please don't view that as a false promise that reach out to me, and I'll be with you any day, any time. We'll make it work within our schedules. It can be here. It can be down there. It can be near you. We can be on the phone. Okay? This is the truly important part, y'all. This third one, seeking a community. You look at that word based on communion. Communion, <laughs> the intimate exchange of ideas, thoughts between people. Yeah? There's some personal stuff that comes up when you're going through this navigator process. 
And it's nice to have someone there, be a shoulder, be a sounding board. And if we can all link arm in arm into this community, again, we'll all be much better off than if we're trying to do it all on our own, okay? Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the future. And uh, my students, if you want to, I'm just going to make three piles for your navigators to turn in, okay? We'll see you after pizza.